I'm Jennifer from Heisel. Today we're talking about one of the most popular forms of manufacturing, injection molding. Today we're joined by expert Teddy, who has been in this field for several years. Welcome, Teddy. Hi, Jennifer. Um, thanks for having me. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Teddy. I've been uh, doing the, I'm with injection molding machine setup. It's my official job title. I've been doing this for about five years. Um, I'm really happy to be here and happy to answer any questions you might have regarding, uh, regarding the subject. Thank you. It's great to have you. So let's start off by looking at in the injection molding industry as a whole. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, injection molding, injection plastic molding the industry uh, and its beginnings, it first as a concept was introduced in the late 19th century. Uh, the first uh, patent for injection, plastic injection molding machine was in 1872, um, a very basic device by today's standards, but that was, uh, that was a start for a very uh, fast growing industry. And then now 1946, the modern version of uh, extrusion screw molding machine um, was introduced by James Watson Henry. Using a rotating screw, James was better able to, uh, to control the process, which uh, drastically increased the the quality of the parts produced. So um, the technology we use today is very similar to, um, to what we use, we use in the past. However, the computers and uh, the automation made uh, the process a lot more easier, cost effective and way more efficient. The principle is the same, but the results are far greater and more reliable and um, more sustainable today. And it, it, keeps, it keeps evolving, keeps getting better. Definitely, and I bet it's changed drastically from, say, 10 years ago to what it is now. Um, and when somebody's in the process of choosing a manufacturing method, obviously there will be benefits and drawbacks to whichever one they choose, depending on what the final part should look like, what it's made from, and obviously how many they want producing. So what would you say are some of the advantages of somebody choosing injection molding and could you give us some situations where it would be beneficial to choose injection molding um, for manufacturing? As um, injection molding, that's, that's one of the uh, main advantages of um, choosing injection molding is that you can produce a large number of parts within a very short uh, amount of time. Once, uh, once the tooling is ready and everything is ready, the production can be paused and restarted within, within one hour, everything is ready to go. This is a uh, fast production, efficiency, uh, low labor cost because it takes little time, it takes little effort to, uh, to mount and get the production uh, start running. It's sustainable because you have 10,000 parts with the exact same specifications. So um, this is what we want, this is everyone wants, the same, the same result over and over again. Uh, high, high output production, that means there is, um, we, we, can, we can make, uh, very uh, large amount of parts within a, within one hour. Let's, let's say, for example, based on the cycle time, um, is a low waste. There is very little plastic wasted during the process, and everything that is wasted can be regrinded and reused uh, at the at the machine when we when we're processing um, the material. Um, one of the disadvantages uh, for the injection molding is. Um, the cost for a low production. If, for example, if you only need 10,000 parts or 100 parts or 1,000 parts, well, up to 100,000 parts is just the tooling, testing, and designing the, the mold, the cost is going to be way too high for, for you to have um, any benefits or any advantages using this, uh, this method. What's uh, over 100,000 parts, if you are to keep making the same part over and over again, then injection molding is by far most efficient and low cost, cost effective method. So I suppose from what you're saying, it's not that beneficial in the prototyping stage or if you're doing small quantities, but then you would reap the rewards later on when the cost per part presumably goes a lot lower once you've you know, accounted for all the tooling. Mm, interesting. So what would make somebody choose injection molding over another manufacturing process, for example, CNC machining? <clears throat> we talk about um, injection molding and the CNC machining. Um, I think it's, uh, the, the question has been, uh, has been kind of answered already. It's, um, 
based on how many how many um, how many parts you unproduce within how much time, and uh, what are the if you want to injection molding, he has he has um, a disadvantage which I haven't mentioned yet. Is injection molding doesn't like sharp corners. It, uh, as um, as a principle, if you want to make the plastic flow to a sharp corner, it's not going to be efficient. There will be there will be weak points there. So that that is um, you can overcome the situation, but uh, it will be very costly. It will be very costly and be very complicated. So um, it depends on the base on the design of the part. You'll want to choose a, a simple design. Um, you want to choose injection molding. A more complicated design. That means you want to go to a CNC because CNC machines they're able to uh, they're able to make very complex complex forms. Okay, excellent, excellent. That's really, really informative. And I think for a lot of people who are thinking of manufacturing a product, once they have the design in mind, they're not sure which manufacturing process would suit them best. So I think that will really help a lot of people guide them into which process would be best for them. So if what to summarize, if it, they have sharp corners, CNC machining might be better because injection molding is better off with rounded edges and simpler design. That's correct, yes. And so we know the plastic starts as granules and comes out as the fully formed part. And in terms of an injection molding machine, it can appear quite complex. And um, would you be able to outline kind of the basic functions or steps to give us a better understanding of how an injection molding machine works? Um, injection machine, um, as, a, um, as a principle, as a, as a whole machine, as a... Um, there is a there is a hopper which feeds the plastic the granules the plastic it comes in granules which feeds into the into the barrel. The barrel uh, contains the extrusion screw which we talked about earlier. This is where it fed is fed mixed and melt uh, the plastic. The extrusion the extrusion screw uh, as it turns it pushes the plastic uh, forward pushing itself back and uh, getting getting the the plastic ready to be injected into the mold. Um, The, um, the other part of the of the machine this is barrel the screw it's the body of the machine um, there is um, the actual mold where the plastic gets in, gets injected in um, once the the process of melting and uh, uh, screw back is ready then um, then the machine is ready to inject the plastic in the mold where we'll spend uh, spend that amount of time cooling cooling down uh, into the shape where it's uh, the shape of the mold uh, after which the mold opens up, and the, the part is ejected is ejected into the under, into a conveyor belt, and uh, pretty much the part will be ready to be uh, to be used straight away as soon as um, it leaves the machine. I see. And how about the mechanics behind this? And what's the, what's the software that allows the machine to be performing all these tasks? What what kind of percentage is is a man made, um, and which what kind of percentage is kind of computer based? Um, as um, as um, when it comes to a programming machine, programming the machine is um, we have uh, we have a number of parameters which we work. It's uh, the sp three basic uh, three basic parameters: this uh, speed, time, and temperature, which we work with. Um, it's injection speed, which is uh, which is the speed that um, the screw moves forward pushing the plastic into the mold uh, this is the injection pressure uh, is the pressure that is needed for the screw to achieve and maintain the speed through the whole uh, through the whole movement while uh, until the, the uh, mold is fully uh, is filled with uh, with enough plastic it is the holding pressure after the screw reaches his, uh, reaches his, uh, his maximum filling point then we need to prevent the plastic from flowing back because we're talking about four, five, six hundred, uh, six hundred bars of pressure. So the screw needs to hold in that position for until the plastic is solid enough so it doesn't flow back anymore. So that is the holding pressure. Uh, and then we have the we have the back, back pressure, which is um, with when the screw turns and uh, the plastic is injected forward, uh, the, the plastic is uh, pushed forward in front of the screw. Uh, ideally, you want to 
achieve the uh, ideal density of the plastic before it's injected in the mold because you have much more control. So uh, the back pressure is the pressure which opposes the screw from moving, uh, moving back up until the density of the material is, is, uh, is achieved. And then slowly the screw will uh, overcome the pressure and, um, and fills the top of the, screw, of the barrel with enough material for the next shot. Um, the temperatures, um, we're talking about the temperature is the, the melting temperature of the plastic, which differs from each type of plastic. They, go, they vary from 60 degrees to 400, which is the maximum, I think, injection molding machine, plastic injection molding machine can handle. Um, and it's the cooling system of the mold as well. But every type of plastic will have to cool down for a certain amount of time um, to be able to, uh, to maintain its uh, dimensions. So this is the cooling system inside the mold. So that's the temperature, pressure, and speed we're talking about. I don't know how, much, how clear I, I was about this. It's extremely uh, clear. Is there any benefit to um, somebody choosing a material that can melt at a lower temperature? Or what's the difference, for example, if I choose a material that needs to be melted at a much higher temperature? Is that more costly or? Well, um, when you have a part designed in mind, you got to think about what I'm going to do with this part. Where is this part going to be? What's, what's going to be the environment I'm going to use this part in? Um, if we talk about um, something that's going to be outside and the cold in the freezing cold, you need something which is going to be a little bit more flexible with a, with a, a, low, uh, with a low melting temperature because outside it's going to be maximum 56 degrees. So uh, materials like polypop, which is uh, it's rather flexible, it's, uh, it's resistant to cold, it doesn't get, uh, it doesn't get brittle, it's, resist, it's flexible enough when it's hot outside to maintain its shape. So if you think, if you want uh, a part which you want to perform mechanically, then you need, uh, you need the material like nylon or comb, which their uh, melting temperature point goes to up to about 300 degrees. But these parts, they're really strong. We also use the filling, like glass filling, which improve, uh, greatly improves the strength of the part. So based on what you, you want to do with the, with the part you want to have, and you're going to decide in which range of melting temperatures uh, you want to go. Basically, the higher the melting temperature, the more mechanical resi resistance you'll have. But with the mechanical resistance, it goes, you sacrifice flexibility. So um, you got to know what, you, what you're going to do with it, where you're going to use it, and uh, how do you want it to perform. Excellent. Really, really interesting. Thank you for this insight. And how efficient is injection molding as a process? So, for example, how quick is a typical cycle time and what factors can influence the speed of a cycle time? I'm talking about the cycle times. Um, once the program is set, we have, uh, we have um, an average cycle time. But then um, there are a type of, uh, type of processes which they run in uh, fully automatic. That means the machine opens and produces a part and it requires no intervention between, uh, between cycles. Uh, this is parts without inserts, without, we don't, do any, uh, don't need to do anything on, uh, on the machine. So the machine runs fully auto, fully automatic, produces parts one after another without any intervention. Then um, if you are in, have any inserts, any metal inserts, anything that you want to add to the, to the machine, that means it's got to be run in a semi-auto uh, semi uh, cycle. That means after every shot, you got to open the door, load the insert, close the door, press the button, which this increases the cycle time with about 10, 15, 20 seconds, even more. If you take in consideration uh, this, Human factor usually increases the cycle time. If the more efficient the machine is, the more robots you have. The more automat uh, the automation is involved into the, uh, the whole process, then the more efficient the cycle time is, is, is going to be. Um, if you have, uh, if the, the company has got enough money to buy, uh, the buy, to buy robots, then the robot can pick up the machine from the part, from the, pick up the part from the machine, sorry, load the inserts, uh, put the uh, part on a conveyor belt, which will go you know, to a box. So this this whole process will shorten the cycle time with um, a lot over time. 
So I guess it's crucial to also think usually, about that. Yes, human factor usually slows down the process. But is human factor is also necessary when you go when you want to have very very high quality very a lot of details and uh, shiny parts. You want to have someone there who checks every time that the part is perfect every single time. Totally makes sense. So the more automated the part is, this is for more simple parts, and for complex parts, it can require more human intervention. But obviously, this then might increase the overall cycle time. So that's something somebody should bear in mind when they design a complex part: is how much intervention will that need from just the machine producing it? Thank you. And could you run us through what a typical setup would look like and a typical cycle? Um, I know you have given us some details, but if there's any other details you'd like to add on that. So uh, once the designing process is uh, designing process is done, then, uh, then it's a matter of manufacturing the actual, the actual mold. Um, when you manufacture, you've got to take consideration um, details like how much the plastic is going to shrink after the part is molded so you know how much you gotta add to the to the overall shape of the of, of the part of dimension of the part inside the mold um, you gotta calculate there's uh, we call gas vents which uh, there is li very little channels small enough so the plastic doesn't go through them but big enough so the air can escape when the uh, plastic gets injected to, into the mold the setup process mounting the the molding machine um, it's, 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 it's rather simple. It, it, it can be connected in four bolts. There is the, the ejection system, which is got to be connected separate. And very important, the, the cooling system, which can be uh, water, air, or uh, oil. Very high temperature, I mean, oil under 90 degrees and, uh, is water. Um, after, the mold is, uh, after the mold is mounted, then it's, it's up to the setter to decide uh, and calculate the amount of plastic that goes into the mold, uh, what is the, the right uh, pressure and temperature? Um, if you, in, a, in a few simple steps, you have 90, 90, 90, 95 to 98 percent filling before the pressure is applied. Um, after you have uh, you have concluded that your part is uh, 90, 95, 98 percent filled, then you apply pressure to the plastic. Your the pressure will. Uh, will give details, will give the consistency, the density, and um, the dimensions for which the part needs to be in. Um, after we apply the pressure, you have the times, uh, how long it takes for the, how, for example, how long the screw needs to stay forward until the, until the, the plastic is solid enough, so it doesn't flow back. And uh, these times, this this is times that they, they can be very sensible because you can easily add two or three seconds on a cycle time and you think about 200,000 uh, cycles that's 400,000 seconds extra so with the, with the times it's very easy to uh, to overdo it um so yeah this is what i was, talk I was talking about the uh, the process you gotta decide the time you gotta find that sweet spot when the plastic is just just ready so it doesn't flow back and uh, and set it at the right moment. This is this is the, the setting up process. Excellent. It does seem like there's an awful lot to consider before it's, you uh, yeah. on full scale production. So in terms of the tooling, the setup, the test you go through, which again is why an expert like yourself should be guiding somebody through that process. Um, and it's where it's really important to have that good relationship with your supplier as well, because you can talk through this with them and they can also make sure that the production is more, most efficient for you. Um, so great, that was really, really informative. Thank you very, very much for your chat today. And um, yeah, we hope to chat with you again soon on, on your expertise regarding injection molding. <laughs>